Let me know, please. Everyone, Jordan, pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> Only the hardy are out tonight, Sean. <laughs> Message hasn't sunk in. They will when it gets nice. Okay, let's prove the minutes of the 19th, of December 19th, and December 26th, 2017 regular meeting. So moved. Second, Seconded, I mean. Mr. Wilkerson, Mr. Baker. Oh, yes? Yes. Okay. Public comments? We have no one. Okay. So let's go to our reports or information reports. Greg Gosling, maintenance update. Mr. Gosling. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. 2018. Uh, just to get some updates of some things that we've been doing along with everything else. And we have been out. We're out. I was out Sunday and then I was out yesterday. Two guys out yesterday making sure we had heat uh, for the school, starting the school. But I actually had people complaining it was too hot. So that's <laughs> Some of the things we've been doing with all of our other extra duties is that uh, LCHS in Lincoln County, we've replaced a lot of the sidewalk, the bollards around through there with LED lighting. Um, these, we replaced 20 of those. Um, uh, we're doing a lot of LED retrofitting lights here, doing away with the ballast, uh, cut the ballast out and put LED lights in using existing fixtures where we don't have to replace them, we go to LED. Uh, those bulbs are run us about $6.30 a piece. Uh, they're good for five years, uh, so we've been doing a lot of that. Uh, Hearts Pre-K-8, the LEDs, we've done a lot of LED placement, then uh, the can lights and different things throughout the school were all out. Um, 85 of those we replaced. At Guyne Valley, around the gym area, we replaced all the entrance area and towards the back with all LED canopy lights to really lighten it up now to where you can uh, see uh, it's a lot safer for the gym and a lot easier to get in there. We also done Hamlin around the gym area, put all the new LED canopy lights up there. At Ranger, we upgraded the complete hallways, all the hallways with drop-in, two-foot LED fixtures. Um, they had the existing old, old lights that hung, kind of hung down below the ceiling. We put these in um, and uh, really, really livened up uh, quite a bit. We've got LED lights for the outside. Midway, they're all bad, so we're replacing all those. Uh, Hamlin Elementary during the break, we've done uh, the elementary, both the downstairs and the upstairs, all the hallways again, of the old lights that was hanging down with two foot LED drop-ins that really lit the, lit the building up. It looks really nice. I know Mr. Davis, is, uh, I was over during uh, the break checking on them while they were working on them. He's really pleased with them. So. We've done a lot at West Hamlin, LED light upgrades on the outside, uh, changing all that. Just to give you a little comparison of what, why I'm going to LEDs and the benefits of LEDs, if uh, we've done a Look at the pole lights now at Lincoln County High School. Continuously have to replace these all the time. It's just, it's just a nightmare. Sometimes you have 16, 18 lights out a year. Just the pole light, the parking lights, they're, they're $428 for a ballast for that. And then $30 again for a bulb on top of that. Now the pole lights, they pull 400 watts of power. The LED replacements that I'm replacing them with they cost us $337 for the LED replacement, and they run at 81 watts. So we're different between 400 watts per light versus 81 watts per light. That's where you get into the power factor when you start calculating <coughs> the power, and then the power equals the kilowatts, which is kilowatts is what we have to pay. So the lower we get that wattage, the less we're going to pay on power, plus the, uh, the benefits of five years with complete replacement. The sidewalk lights that we replaced that were, these were, uh, we had 18 of these lights out at the start. And I was trying to get it all done before basketball season, and we did. 
Uh, just the ballast of nose and a bulb of nose are $272 for a ballast. Uh, those are 100 watts. So I replaced them with a brand new baller and the light, LED light fixture and all. Those pull 15 watts. We're going from 100 watts to 15 watts, and those were costing us at $255 for the complete assembly. Flagpole lights were we flagpoles at Hearts and at uh, Lincoln County are bad, and we replaced the flagpole lights at Lincoln County twice. Those lights cost us $1,500. They're a 75 watt HID light, and it's in a cylinder type. It's a compacted, and uh, I'm replacing those now with the LEDs that are 18 watts, and they cost us $219. So that's a Pretty good savings just right off the bat, not counting the, what we're going to be paying the difference in electric. The retrofit, when I'm retrofitting a light here, when I take this light out and uh, the ballasts go bad, a lot of these older lights that we have, these old fluorescent type fixtures, it's getting harder to find ballasts for these fixtures and the bulbs are set. These lights, if I can, I price this on the cheapest uh, uh, ballast that I use right now. They're about $40 for a ballast and for the bulbs, and they pull 141 watts. A lot of times people will take, you know, you get in the energy saving and you want to take two bulbs out. It looks good and it makes you feel good, but you're still firing up that ballast. You're still using that same wattage on that ballast. So what we're doing is we're doing away with that at 141 watts here, retrofitting it for $6.30 per bulb for five years with that. We're getting those at 72 watts now versus 141 watts. A lot of the can lights that we've done at Hearts, what we talk about, what we've been doing at Hearts, was uh, those were uh, $52 for a ballast. The ballast go bad on these lights. And then the bulb and all, uh, about $20 for the bulb. And those are 42 watts. Replace them with the LEDs at, uh, they're $59 at 25 watts for five years, but these are really bright. It's really lit up the, I know that uh, Mr. Mathis is really like it inside the main office area where we replace all that. It really has lit the uh, area up to where it looks really nice now. The two foot upgrades that we've done uh, at Hamlin and at Ranger, and we're in the process of doing more of those. Those cost us $50.45 a piece and they run 40 watts. So that's a little bit of comparison when you get into the wattages and you compare this not only are we saving the man hours that we have to go to usually a ballast or something like this in a normal classroom that you're using if i get a year and a half out of a ballast i'm doing good what happens a lot of times the bulbs go bad and they're not replaced as frequent as they should and then they start burning the ballasts up because the ballast tries to start all the time so it burns the ballasts up so what we're doing is taking away the man hours. We're doing this also, plus the products we're putting in here are the next line of products with cheaper operating costs. They're cheaper to maintain. So everything we're doing is trying to make that uh, a little bit better for schools, and then we can pre do more for our schools as we continue on. Any questions about that? I'm just trying to comprehend it all. <laughs> I started to do the power thing on the board back here, and I'm like, you know, you do the power and do all the Ohm's Law and tell you all that stuff. But, uh, we did have our yearly EPA asbestos inspection was completed and everything went fine with that. Uh, so we're, we're good there. Uh, some other upgrades that I want to talk about is the Duval building issues. I've contacted a couple different engineers, Ham Engineering, they're retired and I'm going to do that. And I've contacted Randolph Engineering in Taze Valley. I uh, talked to Jacob White. They're willing to come out to the site. The initial visit is $1,000. If they come out and they just look, just stop there, and then everything else is added on to it as we go along. We don't have any idea what the total cost would be. It would just be uh, based on that the original, then they would, uh, they would add according to what they recommend to do, whether it be core sampling or whether it would be uh, additional testing be that I, we don't have an idea on that. Now in talking about that, I did talk, well, we've talked before about doing our doing a three-month inspection, every three months doing an inspection. 
when I got back from Michael White of GMM, uh, the, initial, the initial inspection coming out would be uh, $1,200, and we would put crack monitors in all the walls that are cracked and then monitor that. So we continue that for, and then every three months, we would come, they'd come out and shoot it all with the laser again, the outside and the inside, check the cracks and see if we've seen any changes in between that. Every one of those visits for the three months was $900. So the total for this, for this to start with, now once we do the three months, every three months doing the inspection, at that point I think we can then make a determination how often do we need to do this. Maybe once a year, maybe every six months. I really think we need to do this every three months right now just to make sure we're not seeing some movement that we may miss. So $3,900 for this initial uh, yearly that we're going to be doing for that. So that's an option that we have out there. Any questions about that? Or so we got we got some options here. Uh, uh, my thing is, if we bring in another engineering firm, I don't know what they're going to require. It may require they're going to want to protect their self along with protecting the school system. So they may require a lot more intensive research on it. So. Greg, now this other engineer, you said they would come to the site and look around. Uh, by that, you think they're going to look. Uh, outside and in interior of the crack. Right, and all they'd be that, all looking that. at outside and, and then inside, assessing right. the building, looking at the areas upstairs where we have the gap between the walls that we feel. The they'll be looking at that and then based on that, they make their determination what all else they want to do. Okay. Wouldn't they want to look at all the underlying data we've already collected? I mean, in, in terms of the things the other engineering firm has done? Right. I asked him about that. AC. He said he would rather they would they would prefer to do it their way, not use somebody else's. Well, I prefer they do it that way too. Right. We want two opinions. Right. And that's that would be their total. That I, I, I informed them that ZMM had some data, and that made you know we could share. It. And he, his thing was he'd rather they would they would prefer coming out the initial visit and then make their determinations of what they want to do. But that twelve hundred dollars doesn't tell you what their determination is. No. no. I mean that's just a walk around. Right. I mean that's just yeah. uh, that's just where we got options here where we yeah. want to go with it. It's just uh, how we want to we want to start the inspection now and do that process. We want to bring up the, the other engineer in. And, uh, now what was your estimate for the three month inspection? For everything was thirty nine hundred dollars for the initial the crack and install the crack monitors uh, it's in the stairwell in different places and then thereafter is nine hundred dollars for the every three months so it's a total of thirty nine hundred dollars so per year that's for ZMM to their engineer to continue what they start. I don't know what the new I mean we know right off the bat he's gonna come out and you know I can tell you it's gonna cost us a thousand dollars plus. I don't know. Personally, I'd say do the three months. I, I don't. Th I think in three months' time we'll know. And in three months' time, if we're seeing some things going on, maybe right. then we call in a separate engineer right. to come and look at it. I don't see no sense to keep throwing money out if we're not having right. issues with it. In three months, we're going to know. Especially the freezing and falling right now. It's hard to tell. And I'd say get started on that as soon as we could, when y'all. That's where I'm at. Um, back to uh, just to touch base on the midway modular issue there. Uh, Mr. Midkip and I have talked about this on several occasions. Um, I have talked to uh, Michael uh, Porter. We've been going back and forth. Um, I'll share a couple. Email just a couple of things on it. We were talking about uh, the big holdup has been with the uh, Army Corps engineers getting money to do the BFEs, which was the basic floodplain you know, area A, what Mr. Helton is wanting from our permits. So that gives us a baseline of what 100 year floodplain, where it's going to be, and all these different things. So I was kind of excited when I saw Congress moving on the budget and all these things that I'm thinking, oh, we're going to move on this. So 
I sent Michael Moore and Michael Porter a uh, email and we talked back and forth. They do not want to move till they have money in hand. So we're still up in the air about the budget thing. So it's a continuing resolution type budget. It's not actually the budget. So. But with, this, with saying that, he has stated to me that once it is approved, it's just a matter of two days to get our report. We've got everything, all the surveying done, all of it's laying down there and just a matter of them running through and he said it's a matter of two days. Alternatives that we have that he offered for us that we could do, we could hire a hydraulic engineer, determine the BF for the site. Uh, his saying is it's going to be very expensive if we do it this way, he's saying $500 for each cross section and $900 for engineers to look at that. We could send this all to FEMA. FEMA then in their time frame could look at it and tell us it may be four, maybe five months, and then we get a report back from FEMA on that. The other option was to add to go back to Mr. Helton and suggest that we raise it up to the level the other one where Mr. Tracy and I come in that day at Midway, we're looking at 12 to 14 feet on the lower end if you were to set a modular up on there. I think that was way too expensive to do that. So it's just, uh, we would have to come off the existing building if they would approve it and then set the monitor on top of that, which would require a lot of block work, a lot of extra work that you'd have to do, and the cost would go up quite a bit. In my thinking, what I'm thinking is that we've waited, and Mr. Midkiff and I have discussed this, they're, they're managing to go by, they're, they're managing the classroom in the shortfall of having no classroom. They're managing this pretty well right now. I was hoping we'd have this all worked out by January. But I think that if we waited another month or so and see um, if this, again, in a matter of two days, if they get their money. If the Army Corps in there gets the money, then we're good to go. That's kind of where we're at with that. And did Mrs. Hoover name the baby go to <coughs> waiting? You know. What is it now? The principal, Mrs. Hoover, right? Does, has she said that she would prefer waiting a little bit longer than go through the court? Or well, we've, uh, we, Mr. Mickey and I explained that she she had an idea. Well, I went up there and looked at it about putting that over towards the area we talked about mm -hmm. in the the where the basketball courts are. All right. The problem with that is, and I try to explain to her, is that you can't. And a wooden structure for the fire marshal next to another wooden structure, you have to have a minimum of 15 feet between the buildings. So then that moves it 15 feet away, another 22 feet, 8, and another 12 foot for your walkways and your awnings and things like that. So now we're back out to taking the basketball game. So that's So that's an option that's always out there that we may eventually have to look at that, but. Uh, Feelings about taking that, it would prefer not to do that. So well, that's what I thought I understood, that she went in this, the faculty and the staff that were intent to wait it out for a while and literally right. trying to go in and put it somewhere else. That's, that's, that's kind of, we're in a whole state right now. That's kind and of. Mr. Good. Helton, you're, you're saying these other things that would be alternatives to the Corps of Engineers, mm -hmm. these other FEMA, and these others would be. Those would be acceptable. Anything that was acceptable to him to give you a permit, right? He saying? would accept those. Yes, for FEMA, FEMA would be. That's who he's going by the regulation. Right now. FEMA, what, what he would accept, right? right? Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, we can all we can always look at putting it back on FEMA, and then FEMA get to it whenever they get to it. I'm not. The, the feedback I got from Mr. Porter was that that could be a long draw out process. I think Congress certainly will act before FEMA. That's what I'm <laughs> hoping. <laughs> I, I, when I saw all this coming about, I'm like, yes, you know, this is going to work out. In two days' time, I'm going to have everything, and then we can move on to the bidding process and all that. But it's not. It's more than just the annex. I mean, we're also concerned about the placement of the sewer treatment plant as well. Yes, uh, we'll talk yeah. about that. I, I brought that up with uh, and. We've had, I'll, I'll bring that up here in just a minute, if you don't mind. Uh, that's where we're at with this. Yeah. All right, uh, now the other thing, what Mr. Mick had talked about, uh, and the MIPs for the sewer plants. Uh, 
the initial meeting I had with Mary, Mary Jo from GM, and they had some engineers here on November the 28th. They were in the process of call, talking with Mr. Helton and with the DEP, going on, starting with the permits. Now, here's the thing that's changed since we've talked about the sewer plants. Mason County went with these portable sewer plants. Everybody was pushing towards portable sewer plants. The problem is Mason County was supposed to be done before the start of the school year and it's still not completed. There's all kinds of issues they're having. So we've gone back and we have the money based on what uh, Mary Jo has stated that we have the money to go back to a traditional sewer plant. That's what everybody was recommending not to go with the portable type sewer plant because of all the issues that Mason County's had. They're still, uh, they're still running off their old sewer system because they cannot get the other ones to quit leaking. So I don't think that's something uh, that uh, Mr. Meekip said in on the meeting with that, with this also, is that uh, issues in Mason County have, and uh, I think the, the feelings with everybody in the SBA and all is they're going to they're gonna want us to go with the traditional, not the portable. So that's a process we're going through with that. We went, the same day we went and took initial, we went around to the school at Duval and we went to Midway looking at the area, looking at the floodplain. They don't seem too concerned over it, I'm concerned over it, but uh, they're thinking that we can build based on, they have to be able to furnish us a sewer plant. So they're talking about building walls to protect it even if it is in the floodplain, leaving it the existing area, putting it beside of it, because I don't want the one thing I stated to them both at Duval and at Midway is I don't want I don't want to put a sewer take the old sewer plant out and then try and get that in one summer and something happen. So I want to use the existing sewer plant, put the new one parallel to it or somewhere to it, and then when we're done, it's just a matter of changing the piping around, then taking the old out in case we still uh, we're still trying to make it through that summertime on the school year on that. So that's the thoughts on that. Um, I did talk with her uh, about uh, uh, what yeah, Friday actually and uh, want to know where we were at with our sewer plant. Uh, they, uh, there is a meeting this week with the DEP to discuss all of our permitting and all those things. She stated we're still on schedule for construction documents by the end of February. So that's when we're looking at uh, doing it by the end of February. I have not got, I, I, I asked her about the meeting that they've had. Uh, they don't feel like there's going to be an issue here, but I'm still a little hesitant because we didn't think it was going to be an issue on a portable module either. So we're gonna, I'm going to touch base back with her and we're going to be in contact before February to make sure we get this bid out. They're responsible for all the permits, all the, uh, from Mr. Houghton, from the DEP, all that is all got to be done uh, uh, as part of the bid process. Question about that. I was up there, I was really pleased. Uh, I know that Mr. Mikiff worked very hard and he done an excellent presentation. Mr. Priestley was up there during our presentation uh, for our needs project. Um, myself and Mr. Ellis there, Mr. Ellis is a great asset to us with this. Uh, I'm really pleased that we got the uh, uh, got the roofing projects. Now, I did talk and Mr. Mickip and I discussed this. Uh, according to my call, we were talking about bidding, starting the bid process and getting our roofing project starting uh, bidding it out, but we were told to wait. So we're kind of waiting to see until uh, we get the money and then they'll have specifications. SBA will have specifications the way they want us to do it. So. Uh, but that's, that's where we're at with the roofing project. Are you going to bid them all at the same time? We kind of, I personally would like to have one person doing them. Rather than put two here and two here, you may get this company A, maybe company B. I would rather have them all grouped together. Now, we get into that, then you got to get into uh, prevailing wages and all those things. But uh, 
I think we're going to wait and see. That's, the thought was that we were talking about bidding them all out as, as a, a complete project. And that way we have one company that we're dealing with with everything. Based on what the SBA's instructions they're going to give us when they give us the money, they're going to have to set up, that. according to uh, Mr. Alder saying that he'll have specifications on what, how they want us to do it. MIP, we're looking at the MIP, the window, we're looking at, we were looking at window replacement for Midway and we're kind of waiting to see what they're willing to accept. Mr. Midkiff has informed us he's been back and forth with them is we're not sure exactly what they're going to offer, but we're going to be able to go with it. We're, the, the, what we're being told is it's probably going to be more towards roofing projects on the MIP, so we're not sure at this point what, uh, what we're going to do. And I'd also like to look at, uh, we've got a couple of issues too that I need to, about the safe schools part on card access. The older systems at Midway at Duval, Duval got pricing on it, it's about 22000 to replace it. So maybe if they open, I don't know how they open this window up, if we don't get the windows for Midway, maybe we'll look at applying for card access to get it up to our newer system. The problem there is when you lose power at these buildings, they got a magnet that, that holds the door shut and then you use a little fob to open the door. When you lose power, the magnet releases so the door's wide open. So there's an issue with the safety of that when you, when you have power outages. With the older system? Yes. But not the newer system? The newer system does not do that. The newer system, when you lose power, it locks the door. Should. I mean, these older systems that we're looking at Midway and Duval, it just had the magnet. When the power goes off that magnet, the door releases. And because they didn't have to go around physically lock the doors back with the bar, and, uh, and that becomes a problem. Uh, Greg, is Midway the only school that the uh, windows haven't been replaced? Yes, yes. Or Midway is our last one. And that's on the older part. Of course, all the other add-ons and the modules and all that have got the other part of it. So. Uh, and those are due March the 5th, and hopefully, we've been talking, hopefully we can find out exactly what they're going to offer for that, and we can go from there. I hope we can find out sooner, so we'll know which, which way we need to go. I did receive the SBA report when they, uh, they go around to check our or, so if they're going to ask, if they're going to offer for roofs, the other alternative that we're looking at, according to if we have some matching funds, is um, the FBA and an inspection of West Hamlin, which we knew this, but uh, one of the recommendations from the SBA on their yearly inspection was that uh, to replace the roof, the roof has uh, exceeded its lifetime. So, so that's a little something there we can look at on at, uh, West Hamlin. Is put it in for an MIP if they're going to take roofing projects. So we, we don't know. We're kind of up here to find out about that. Uh, other thing, we had our bid process out. Uh, Ms. Black and I were up there and we opened up a bid service for the trash service for the 2018-2019 school year. We had one vendor, the vendor currently have that bid on it, uh, Republic Services. They uh, Came in at 42,864, no increase from last year, so we saved it, everything. They actually, I actually upgraded uh, Ranger. Ranger was a four yard size uh, dumpster. I upgraded it to a six. Uh, they upgraded with no charge. Uh, we did have a couple issues uh, throughout the uh, school year, mainly, uh, it wasn't that big of an issue, the fact that they weren't emptying them three times at the high school, and then we got that correct and they were coming on Saturdays to empty it. Because of the issues we had with that, they, they put two more dumpsters at the high school. We currently had, and the contract was four, so they added two more eight-yard dumpsters there free of charge. So now we have three dumpsters at each site, at the vocational side and then the kitchen side actually has three eight-yard dumpsters there too with no charge. He asked me, he said, uh, during his contract, do you want to leave them? Said, we get charged for them? He said, no, let's leave them. So, so 
that's uh, where we're at with that. I think this was a positive uh, update. Usually we're talking about uh, other things that are falling apart and things. I just feel like we've done a lot of positive things here that we're doing. And, uh, How's the field doing? <laughs> it's a lot different. Than, I, I usually read that. I really won't say this. <laughs> I uh, just uh, appreciate all that. Commend you all for going out and preparing our school for today, and we didn't have any. We'll keep our fingers crossed. We don't. Yeah, we're that. hoping, and we've got everything running right now. I'm actually going to look tonight, logging in, and maybe turning the Guy Valley off a little bit tonight because they're cold, but too hot. But I'd rather yeah. be too hot, too cold. <laughs> right yeah. Well, after the shutdown for a couple of weeks, I yeah. think that's a good yeah. idea. You know, get older equipment, it's, uh, most of this equipment out there in these schools are 15, 16 years old, all the air handlers, so you never know. And, uh, I know Mr. Mukip and Mr. Lundell, we've been going back and forth all weekend, and then Sunday I went out and saw some issues with Mr. Pritchard at Guy and Valley. We've done some changes there, and then Monday I logged in and I saw some issues different throughout the school, and then I had one guy go this side of the hill, and I was over at West Hamill with another one who would go hit all of them. Right. So Let me tell you that uh, they said 18 degrees today. I was up on the roof at West Hamill. It was, it was colder than 18 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> at least you didn't fall through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. Cool. Thanks, Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we have Rod Cummings. Rod, you got a, something to follow there. <laughs> yeah, it won't take near as long. <laughs> uh, but I do want to start out by talking about the weather, too. Uh, you know, obviously it's pretty cold out. Uh, this is something that we really take uh, serious and it's a big concern for us. It's a concern from the aspect uh, that in the mornings when these children get out in, in these low uh, temperatures, if one of our buses doesn't show up and they don't know about it, they're out in that cold and after an extended period of time, there's lots of things that can happen. Uh, so we too took a lot of precautions. Uh, I want to commend my mechanics and my drivers over the past week and especially the last two days uh, they've been out making sure all the buses would start uh, warming them up uh, making sure the batteries were good our drivers were in and out last week over here just starting their buses and checking on it and did the same thing over the weekend uh, because like i said it is a big concern for us when the kids are left out standing and that's the last thing that we want now we have uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier but we have 49 bus routes uh, those 49, we had one that I would really consider uh, was a weather-related um, failure this morning. I uh, had another bus that, that started, ran for about 45 minutes. The engine was hot. Uh, I think it turned it off, and it wouldn't start back because the alternator went bad, uh, which I don't think has anything to do with the weather. Uh, I did have another bus that was on the route, uh, and the door froze up. Uh, the door has air uh, pressure. The door froze if open or wouldn't, wouldn't open. Uh, so we had other people that would help out and pick up those kids and get them as soon as possible and get them back to school. Uh, so all in all, I think we had a pretty successful morning with that. Uh, with the number of buses and children we had to move, and I think it worked out pretty well. Um, you know, especially uh, in our case when our buses had been set for a little over a week. Um, you know, that that's when things go wrong. Uh, not to downplay any other day, but this morning was kind of pivotal, I thought. And hopefully tomorrow will be, be even better. Well, the length of time plus this, you know, lower than normal temperatures hit you at the same time. Yeah, it hits you at the same time. And, and you know, even with starting the bus, is one, <coughs> excuse me, one of my concerns, or our concerns, uh, was the air brakes. Uh, these buses have been sitting, even though you start them, there's a little bit of moisture in the air break, and it freezes. Uh, then it'll take 45 minutes or an hour for that to fall out so that it's safe for them to drive. Uh, so, you know, we encouraged our people to go early this morning uh, to start their buses to make sure that that wasn't an issue. Uh, but they did a really good job, and I wanted to give them a pat on the back. They deserve it, though. Safety is foremost. That's the most important thing. Uh, Kind of along the same realm, I guess. Uh, our bus inspections are going real well. Uh, we had one recently. We had, uh, and he usually does eight buses when he does an inspection. This last one, we had uh, 14 minor defects. 
We had two buses that didn't have any def defects at all. None of them were taken off the road. It was just things that we could repair. So we, we like the way that our inspections have been going this year um, with, uh, with that. Uh, substitutes is always a concern for us, too. Uh, currently, uh, we have two substitutes that are retracted. So hopefully we'll have two more. And I think, uh, at least from my perspective, as far as substitutes go, we're probably, uh, before these two uh, get on board, but we're probably in better shape than we have been since I've been here with substitutes. Uh, not to say that there won't be runs and things that we can't cover in the evening because of sickness or the number of people that's on for you know, whatever issue. But, but I'm pleased with the way that's going to. We spoke earlier, the, the last time that I was here, about the uh, gasoline and the buses that were, you know, will be part of the pilot program. And Bluebird is going to deliver one, bring one down for us to drive and check out in the near future. And the next time I come back, I'll let you know how that, that got us. We'll just let you know that that's still, uh, still on, on our minds. Uh, another thing that we mentioned that I wanted to, to bring some closure to, uh, we had some issues with the diesel tank and gone ballot. All that has been repaired and it's back up and running. Uh, so we met the requirements for that. Any questions about it? <coughs> Sounds great. All right. I appreciate Thanks. your hard work and all your men. Thanks. Yeah, because you, you really, unless you were out driving around this morning like I was, you yeah. have no idea how some parents send their kids out to school in five degree weather. Oh, yeah. Literally five degrees showing on my car, and I drove by two children, I won't tell you where, mm -hmm. waiting on the bus. One had on a thin long sleeve shirt, the other had on a sweatshirt. Neither had coats. And th these were middle school age children, I would guess, but in five degree weather, those kids standing out there. So thanks for doing what it takes to make sure these kids get picked up because, in, like in a lot of situations, responsibility falls back to us for the safety of the kids. So, and, and one of the things too I'll mention while we're on that discussion, uh, you know, maybe a lot of people think we, we just make a decision to close school. And it's something that Mr. Minkiff and, and, and all the administration takes, uh, I guess I don't know if pride's the right word, but takes a lot of heartache in trying to make the right decision uh, for the safety of kids. And I think it's commendable for them. Absolutely. Thanks. I told Mr. Minkiff last week that the weather was coming up that he probably wasn't going to sleep as much this week. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, may, it may be April. <laughs> Come on, spring. <laughs> Come on, spring. Okay, let's go to the administrative section. I have a motion, please. So move. I think that was Fred and Karen. Fred and Karen. I was right. tall. <laughs> You're getting me confused here. Okay. Item A is an agreement with West Virginia State Auditor's Office to audit the county's basic financial statements as of and for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2017, according to generally accepted accounting standards as outlined in the agreement, which is attached. Item B, to award a contract to Republic Services for trash removal at all schools and the central office complex for the 2018-2019 fiscal year, according to the bids to be received, which is attached. And the last item, C, out-of-state travel for the following employees. Okay. All right, anyone have any questions on any of those items? Robinson, you have any comments? I'm still working on it. <laughs> no, I'll say nothing else. You have the same concerns though you've had every year. I have the same concerns. Okay. Okay. But we all know what those are, John. You know, don't I do. Okay. Okay. Last your story. Everyone knows by now. Okay. If uh, that's all, then uh, is that all? Yes, vote. Yes. 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 Okay. They're all set. Okay. All right. Let's go to finance, please. Motion. Mr. Wilkerson, there, second. Okay. Hey. Uh, schedule of invoices totaling $270,280.04. We 
which is attached. If you got any questions, just let me know. Okay. How'd your day go today, Ray? Did you have a good morning? It was not. <laughs> it's, it's, it's still golden. <laughs> I saw you were having some good coffee. Yeah, we heard some. I just showed up here, Greg and Rod speak. I like to hear them speak. So. Yeah. Well, you gotta they, see someone else on the hot seat, don't you? They record all this. If you want to <coughs> subscribe to the Lincoln Journal, that's a good boy. Video. Okay. Uh, no one has any questions about the finance items. Is that an all yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. The personnel section. The motion, please. Um, Fred. I'll second. Rowdy, second. Bill. Okay, item A, employment of extracurricular personnel and item B, retirement resignations. Uh, no changes in the sheet I gave you last week. Uh, just room, uh, we will be interviewing uh, candidates for the West Hamlin job Friday. We have nine of them, as we said, starting at 8, and the last one's at 3.15, so we will be all day doing that. And just a reminder, if you get put down February 15th, is the board work session at 8.30. Okay. And is it still your intention, uh, with Mr. Mipkin, to have a, yes. an applicant? Recommendation on the next meeting, six next meeting, yes, January 16th. Yes, all right. Okay. And the next posting is going out. Going out tomorrow. We're going to get it out today, but we have a situation with an aid where we, we don't know whether we need to abolish that one or leave it. And we was waiting on the child to come back, and they never showed up at either school today. So, <laughs> so, so, so we need to get one out. We want to make sure if we can abolish one, one somewhere, and if we're going to put one out, we want to make sure. You've got a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. That was a little bit. Okay. Uh, if no one has any questions about the per uh, personnel items, is that an all yes? Yeah. Yes. Oh. All right. Comments and concerns? Board members? Anybody have anything? Mr. Meekiff, do you have anything? I don't have anything to say. Okay. I don't know of anything else. Now, we uh, tomorrow, Mr. Meekiff and I are going to our first ESC meeting. So, uh, a lot of the preparational type of thing to be taking place, putting my bylaws and electing officers and this, that, and the other. So you know, after tomorrow, we'll have a better feel for leading into the end of the year. And we'll discuss some of the things that we are uh, really don't know the answer to either. It's such a <coughs> logistical where we're going to be <coughs> located. So we are going to, but I think Mrs. Hamlin has done some of those things maybe we'll share with We'll let you on that. Okay, let's adjourn into all, uh, January the 16th, 2018, at 6 o'clock here at the county office. Motion. Come on. Fred. Second. And Rowdy. Fred and Rowdy. All yes? Yeah. Yes, sir. Bye, Carol. Yeah.